After two generations of the internally developed Tensor processor, just where does Google go from here? Well, let's examine just what we'd like to see and what this might mean for the wider smartphone space. One of the biggest and most warranted complaints about the Tensor processor and the Tensor G2 is the lack of power when compared to the likes of Qualcomm MediaTek and of course Apple's own A-series processors. In all honesty, this is a fair comment and something that does matter when other flagship level smartphones can offer more readily available system resources to run your favourite apps, games and do so much better with regards to power consumption. In defence of Google though, the first two generations of the Tensor processor can do just about everything that you would wish to do on a modern smartphone. Would it be nice to have some extra overhead power or power overhead? Well sure. But the first few attempts to create a new chip design and then go and iterate were always going to be a struggle. Simply putting out a competent chip was the initial aim, and in that regard, the Tensor and Tensor G2 processors have certainly succeeded. It's no great secret that Google prefers to tune and own the Pixel software experience to get the most from the hardware available. The A series is a testament to this, while the Pixel 5 series, if you can cast your mind back, felt like an experiment to try and provide what was considered a flagship level experience without a top tier system on a chip, and that has definitely stood Google in good stead. As graphical and power demands on Android apps and games have increased year over year and include the camera performance, simply tuning the software isn't going to be enough though. A powerful processor is going to be required to get the most from your phone, whether the current generation is enough or deemed enough for now. Just how long Google will be happy being behind the industry front runners remains to be seen though. After all, not every single issue a smartphone has can be resolved with a software update and Google has dropped the ball a few times over the past few years since introducing the Tensor chip. You could also argue that relying on Samsung Foundry to produce chips for the Pixel series could be holding back Tensor processors. We know that the Google Tensor processor is technically a deviation or a remix of the Samsung Exynos series, with Samsung opting to drop their own internally developed chip in favour of the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for the global S23 series launch. This means that potentially the only flagship level phones in 2023 using an Exynos based processor will be the upcoming Pixel 8 series, and that causes confusion in its own right. If Samsung favours the truly impressive Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, does this mean that the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro will fall even further behind the competition in terms of sheer graphical and power grunt? It's certainly unclear at this stage, as we just don't know for certain what the next generation Tensor processor has to truly offer us. That said, if the recent market share gains by Google are to be believed, making a comparably capable product to the S23 series will no doubt help shift some prospective buyers over to the Pixel line. Simply treading water and making a chip that is good enough won't really be beneficial in the long run. The average buyer might not care, but with rumours of more Android OEMs leaving certain global markets, it definitely hands Google an opportunity to make serious inroads with the Pixel lineup. Google Tensor can be at the forefront of this. Devices powered by the processor could simultaneously act the interest of that tech literate crowd and tech fans, and even those just wanting what would could be considered the best Android phone at the best possible price. Of course, that relies on Google not only tweaking the processor, but increasing their global availability of their smartphone lineups. Another important point that might be overlooked is actually with regard to sustainability. And this has always been an important focus for many made by Google products in recent years, from cases and covers to the chassis of the phone you might be using. We see the use of recycled materials, clean energy claims, and while it might not seem important to make Tensor as powerful as possible as part of a sustainability pledge, doing this actually ensures that device longevity is more than assured. It's no good having an environmentally conscious approach only to see phones ditched after a few years because performance is waning. It's a side note, but I think it's definitely one of those things that's still important to think about. And while we'd love to see an updated operating system update pledge, especially now Google is no longer obligated by Qualcomm's contractual terms, making sure that even five years after launch, your Pixel runs smoothly needs to be a continual and constant priority. Ironically though, many older Pixels still perform admirably given these software enhancements for devices even as they age. 
In the short term, this is a good idea. In the long term, if people hang on to your products because they work as expected for a long period, then brand loyalty almost dictates that you'll see return customers later down the line. Take Apple, for example. Most people tend to switch from one older Apple phone to a brand new iPhone. Understandably, of course, it takes time to design, test and produce chips at scale. And this needs to align with the production cycle of those upcoming smartphone launches. If we take the first generation Tensor processor as an example, it was based on the Exynos 2100 used by the Galaxy S22 series. Samsung has not launched an Exynos 2300 chip, so Tensor G2 is merely an upgraded version of that first generation SoC. Sure, it offers some enhancements of its own, but there's no real quantum leap in terms of efficiency or raw performance available. Tensor G3 may provide more gains in all areas as a result. Given Google's track record of bleeding every drop out of the hardware at hand, the camera hardware being a prime example, it would be disappointing to see yet another minor revision that doesn't push the needle forward very much. We're not expecting huge generational leaps year over year, let's make that clear. That would be unsustainable and pretty much unfeasible. Although a big Google Tensor upgrade every two to three years would be a welcome boost for the firm's flagship smartphone series. If nothing drastic is done though, the so-called flagship Pixel smartphone line featuring Google's own chip risks unintentionally falling back into the mid-range and becoming a little bit like the Pixel 5 slap bang in the middle of the pack trying to sell a flagship experience but without the flagship specifications to back it up. One notable concern as well is the confirmation from Sundar Pichai that the Tensor processor or the original was four years in the making. We've seen Google squander substantial leads in the computational photography space before failing to move or make a change from the existing formula, so we do hope that Google doesn't start to rest on its laurels when they do eventually catch up with the rest of the pack. Google has certainly doubled down on using machine learning and AI processing within Tensor and Pixel marketing materials since the launch of the 6 series in late 2021. The original marketing materials tout state-of-the-art machine learning models which is said to improve power consumption while allowing for things like real-time speech recognition without a network connection required by your device. When these functions debuted, it was not necessarily a common feature on smartphones and the ability to translate text or spoken words in real time is still impressive. However, we're now starting to see the emergence of AI and large language model powered tools such as Chatbeat GPT and even Google has released its own BARD AI system in early access. What does the future of AI mean for Google Tensor? Well, we could see Lambda applications in Pixel and made by Google hardware, but no information has really been shared at this stage. That said, given the focus on machine learning functionality with the Pixel lineup, it would be an obvious place for Google to implement Bard-like tech right there on the Tensor processor. At this early stage, Google though is playing catch up to the competition. However, this does only apply to the public facing offerings and Bard being pitched as an experimental preview means we could see something more powerful later down the line. It might not be perfect at least at this stage, but direct integration with your smartphone could definitely provide some interesting results. Alongside Bard, Google AI has also been working on Muse, which is a text to image generator. This type of technology could no doubt be integrated and boost the camera capabilities or improve upon key selling functions such as Magic Eraser or Face Unblur. The applications may be pretty much endless for the tech, but would it be enough to differentiate when devices like the Galaxy S23 Ultra and iPhone 14 Pro Max can actually just use their pure hardware capabilities to provide similar effects with that raw computing power available? I think that's a much bigger conversation. There is one elephant in the room though when we start to discuss Tensor and the supposed benefits to Pixel owners and users, and that is Google One. We've seen a number of Pixel exclusive features move over to Google One subscription plans, including that VPN service and functions which are supposedly set to rely on Tensor, including Magic Eraser. Paywalling Pixel exclusive functions behind a Google One subscription tier I think undermines the work done to enhance the Tensor based features on first party smartphones. Why would you sell a Pixel on promises of unique or exclusive options only to allow non Google smartphone users to access a cloud storage plan or access to these with a cloud storage plan and then see better results with those devices? Google 
One itself could almost unravel the Pixel series as a perspective option for many people, as these extra functions, which are supposedly powered by Tensor, end up coming to more devices with that 100 gigabyte base tier, and it hinders efforts to make Tensor an enticing option later down the line for prospective buyers, especially if they just have to maintain or use their existing subscription plan. That's a bigger question for another day, and if you want to hear a full deep dive into this, then let us know down in the comments sections below. Over the past few years, rumors have also swirled about the potential usage of Tensor in other devices. We know that the upcoming Pixel tablet will utilize the processor, but there were rumors of a Chromebook utilizing Google's internally developed processor, but that it seems to have been, or the information upon that has dried up. This would be an interesting prospect as notoriously Chromebooks have lacked power, but do have the ability to run Android applications to fill in any of the functionality gaps that the cloud-based platform has seemingly suffered with. With a cross-platform chip, Chrome OS would undoubtedly be different and definitely benefit with this integration. Maybe in future we'll even see an upcoming Pixel Watch with Tensor branding. It was something we did expect ahead of launch. We've also recently seen Apple go all in on the A and M series chips. These ARM-based processors have evolved to become absolute powerhouses which compete with the biggest and best de desktop processors without the associated overheads such as power draw and heat dissipation. That's not all though as these are wholly Apple chipsets that will be fully tuned by the Cupertino tech giant in almost every single product in their respective lineups. Some older A-series processors still usurp the best Android chips. That really should be the end goal for Google with Tensor, especially if devices like the Pixel A-series will utilize previous gen processors. And with that in mind, it wouldn't be a stretch to assume that Google has grand ambitions for Tensor as a whole, be that a mobile processor or used in one of the array of Chromebooks, tablets, smart home tech, wearables, and even more. Like Apple, this will be a move to create a more flexible ecosystem of products that spans key focus areas. Google likely wants to offer an alternative for those not wanting iOS, macOS, iPadOS, or even Samsung's own attempts to compete with Apple's well-lauded ecosystem. Just where Tensor takes the Pixel series in the short term is pretty undefined. Hopefully those starting with the Tensor G3 the Google Pixel series will start an upward tra trajectory back towards the top of the performance charts. As the Pixel 6 and Pixel 7 series might have proven, it might not necessarily seem a necessity for high level performance right now, but it certainly will be in the years to come. Of course, I'm sure the first comments that we'll see beneath this video will tell us that Google should immediately switch back to Qualcomm processors, and as nice as that might, might be, we just can't see that happening. Although I do want to ask you, what do you think the future will bring for Tensor and Google's internally developed processors? Let us know down in the comment sections below. Until next time though, this is Damien with 95 Google saying thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.